Hey, this is for my digital fabrication class who've been working on a book project. And now that we're uh, doing the class online, we're going to um, look at those book projects or the results of them through a video. So uh, the idea is I'm going to watch a video or anyone could watch this video that is kind of essentially feels like I'm interacting with the book. So whatever features of the book that you have uh, integrated into the design, you'll kind of explore them in this video and we'll be able to see all of that. So this also could be useful to anybody who wants to make a video really quickly from individual frames in Photoshop. So what we're going to end up with is something that's kind of like a stop motion animation. And um, the way we'd start is in Photoshop, just create a new document and the dimensions, I would say uh, probably making them the same dimensions as the photos that you took. So if I look at one of these photos uh, just you know, on a Mac, I can get info on Windows. I would look at the properties and I can see here it's 4032 by 3024. So in Photoshop, that's the size I'm making my canvas or my um, artboard. I'll hit create. And um, the first thing I can do is go to the scripts menu and choose load files into stack. Hit browse. And what this is going to do is take all of these images, uh, some of which I don't actually want. So where do I want to start? I think uh, here, no, here, all the way down. Hit open. And it's going to take each of these images and put them on their own layers. Okay, so I'm in the crop tool. That's why it's showing that box there. But here we are. If I look at each of these layers, I'm going to actually turn them off in turn. There's one, there's another, there's another. And uh, what you'll see is that the book kind of stays in the same place as I um, click to the different frames. And I did that on purpose, right? Like I had the camera overhead and I kept the, the book in, as, in the same place as much as I could. The way that I did this was just with my cell phone. It'd be great if you could do it with a camera on a tripod, but just to show you how I did it, um, I just took, if you pretend that wallet is my phone, I just took my phone and kind of jammed it on a pile of books and then put this other book on top so it would stay there. And, you know, with one hand, I sort of turned the page of the book, trying to keep it in the same place, and then um, click, the, click the button on the phone to take another picture. So that's how I ended up with all of these. Now I've only got this last one here uh, visible, and I can go to the window menu and hit timeline. This is where we start putting them together in this video form. And I'll click create frame animation here, and it's creating a frame just that it took that one layer and made a frame for it. And now to get the rest to show up, all I have to do is go to this pop up and choose make frames from layers. So there they are. There's, that's all of them. And if I flip through them, I'll see that actually this is backwards. This is the front page. That's the next spread. And that's the next spread. So there's an easy way to fix that. I'll just highlight them all with the shift key and uh, reverse frames. So now they're in the right order. And if I look at this, uh, I can just hit play and you'll see it just flips through and you can see that it kind of stays in the same place, which is kind of nice. Uh, and maybe that's a little too fast. So the first thing I can do is I could change each one individually. It allows me to choose the timing here, but I could also, again, hold down the shift key, highlight them all and choose uh, the time on one of them. Try that again, highlight them all and choose a different amount of time. So now they're all 0.5 seconds. And if I hit play, you can see it moves slower. Now, if you have, uh, I think in, in the projects that I've seen, there's something interesting going on in each of them. Nobody made a book like this. So for some of them, it feels like there could be some pacing during some parts of these frames and then another pacing at other parts. So for example, if uh, like Morgan's book kind of looks like a box, and I think you know there's a point where moving at one uh, one frame every half a second is perfect, but maybe the actual process of unfolding the sides of the box is something that you might not take one picture while it's folded, uh, one picture while it's unfolded. You might take 10 pictures, and that part you might want to have uh, faster pacing. So then it really starts to look like stop motion animation and less of a slideshow. And to do that, you could just, again, select some of the frames and choose some faster pace. So this doesn't really make sense for this one, but let me try it. So it's slow and then it goes fast and then slow again. So I would play with timing, especially if you have a lot of frames here playing with the timing so that it ends up unfolding the way that you want. And then once you're done, um, this forever is interesting. You know, we could see what it looks like just once by choosing once here 
rewind to the front and then hit play. This is showing what the video would look like. And the reason why there's a forever is if we want to save this as an animated GIF, which I'm not recommending because I feel like they're going to be too long and too large, is uh, you could use forever and the animated GIF would go on forever. But for ours, we just want it to go once and that gives us an idea of what it would look like. So um, I'll go to, and I think probably it makes sense to have a frame here that you know, says who made it. Of course, your book maybe says that, so maybe that's enough. Um, but you could have kind of intro frames and end frames. That's not crazy. You can also edit these videos afterward if you're interested, but I wanted to give you a really simple way uh, just with Photoshop to make these videos. So now once it's done, I just go to File, Export, and choose Render Video. I'm going to leave this. One thing is I want to notice where it's going to save it. So users are do our documents and um, I can leave it at MP4 and H.264 is the format that it shows the um, size. I think, you know, choosing either um, 720p or uh, 1080p is probably a good idea. Now, um, that's the resolution that it'll end up at. That's I'm going to choose 1080p and hit render. This takes a while. I've sped it up just so you can see. And now if I go into uh, that folder that it said, which was under documents, there it is. And uh, if I just hit the space bar, I'll be able to preview it. And it looks just like it did in Photoshop. One interesting thing is that this is, uh, you know, widescreen 1080p or 720p is HD resolutions. So uh, it's 16 by nine. The pictures I took with my phone were not 16 by nine. And that's actually a setting in my phone. I, I don't remember why I think, for whatever reason, I changed my phone so that the uh, pictures were not widescreen. So it, on your phone, it might may fill the frame perfectly. Uh, if not, you know, I if I really wanted to work with the images that I have here, I'd probably have to um, adjust the size of the um, the canvas or the artboard so that it's actually 16 by nine. So one way I could do that is using crop, and you can see here you can choose a ratio 16 by nine. And so you can see in my case, it would, it would kind of crop out part of the book. It's not great, but you know, hopefully you don't have to work with this at all. You can just make sure that the pictures you take from your camera or your phone are actually 16 by nine. That way, when you export it, uh, it looks correct without having these borders. I guess this isn't terrible, but it, it looks a little weird. So, um, that's it. I made a video. I could open this video up in some other program like QuickTime and make changes to it, but uh, should be able to do everything that we need just from Photoshop. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, good luck.